Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Davis Maddock of DailyRotor.com, who's here to break down this weekend's PGA Tournament. What's going on here, Davis? Well, you know, it is a little bit of a come down with the PGA schedule going from what was, I, I mean, that Sunday at the PGA Championship, I mean, it was, it was insane. That leaderboard was, was nuts. And now we are coming to uh, one, of the, one of the least prestigious events on, on tour where we head to the Sedgefield Country Club to play the Wyndham Championship. Uh, but, you know, it's still going to be great golf. Stronger field than we normally get for this event just due to the way that the PGA Tour schedule is working. So still still some stuff for us to wager on, still some bets that we like. I was never worried about having bets that we like, but it is definitely a come down from last weekend. The PGA Championship was just awesome. We got golf in prime time. We had a leaderboard, leaderboard full of stars. I mean, everybody tied at the top. Ten different people, it felt like, were in the lead on Sunday at the PGA Championship before Colin Marikawa uh, walked away with the victory with that unbelievable tee shot. And hopefully this weekend will be just as fun. So let's begin and let's start with the golfer that has the lowest odds that you like. We begin at 33-1. to 1, And that is Billy Horschel. So Horschel is a guy whose game has been extremely up and down since the restart. But when we look at the Sedgefield Country Club, this this really is kind of a, an old man grinders kind of course. You know, we see guys who hit it 280 off the tee. You know, they hit their pitching wedge 120 yards. Like those guys actually can succeed here. We saw when Tiger Woods returned from his back injury, this was one of the first golf courses that he did really well at with his new, you know, not bombing it off the tee game. And Horschel really hits that profile. And, uh, you know, if you look at Webb Simpson versus Billy Horschel and you take strokes gained putting out of the equation, they've been pretty similar golfers since the restart. Horschel just hasn't been, you know, on fire with the putter. So 33 to one, we, uh, we really like Horschel. It's not one of these tournaments we've talked a lot about where it's all about the Bryson DeChambeau's where you just bomb it down the course and you just pray with your putter. Here, it's a little bit of an old man's game. We're going to get to a lot of that here in a few moments. But Billy Horschel at 33-1, to 1, just with the way he's been playing in this course setup, uh, it works out. He's 33-1, to 1, and it's worth placing a bet on. One guy that you usually, or I guess last season, talked a lot more about was Sung Jae Im. Sung Jae Im at 34 to 1. He's no Benny On, but Sung Jae Im uh, this week in a good spot at the Wyndham. How come? So Sung Jae has been terrible since the restart. Uh, he just, he's been awful, right? Like, and, and because he is such a grinder, he's still making these cuts. You know, there's literally been. Uh, there, there was a tournament where he had to birdie like a pretty difficult 18 hole to, uh, to make the cut. And he hits a miracle approach shot from like 180 to make the birdie to make the cut. And then he just, you know, T54s or whatever. However, I think there are some signs that he is putting things together. Uh, you know, he, he was not great at the PGA championship or anything like that, but also, you know, he wasn't losing like a crazy amount of strokes. Like he wasn't one of these guys who missed the cut going plus eight or anything like that. And if you look at his long-term form, he's still about 25th on tour in strokes gain total. And this is an event where, you know, we're not seeing Rory McIlroy. We're not seeing Bryson. Like we're not seeing these guys at the top of the board. So I actually think that a really solid betting strategy this week is just pounding the mid-range of like I, I think you could bet you know six guys from 30 to 1 to 65 to 1 and have that be like a really profitable plus EV card and Sungjae fits that mold for us I love when you start talking about a bet and say this guy's been terrible like that that really inspires confidence yeah, just get you, gets you ready to go it does and Sungjae uh, will have the opportunity to at least bounce back here a little bit make the cut and do some damage or so we hope at the Wyndham this week it's a bit of a different feel it's a bit of a different feel as well so hopefully here uh, Sungjae M will do enough to at least make it interesting on Sunday staying in that same range a little bit greater it's 41 to 1 it's Ryan Moore uh, it's not the older guy we're gonna get to in a few moments but Ryan Moore uh, he has had some success he has played a little bit better than Sung J.M. he's at 41 to 1 this week why is Ryan Moore on the card so Ryan Moore is a favorite of Data Golf, our uh, our pro our projections provider over at Daily Roto, and you know I I actually think it's pretty easy to see why. I mean he has been he's actually been playing above his baselines this year on the PGA Tour. Like he is already what we think of as you know a pretty solid golfer overall. Forty second on tour strokes gained off the tee. 33rd on tour strokes gained approaching the green, not a very good putter, not a very good wedge player, but you know, like just, just a very 
uh, very a very solid player is I think how I would describe Ryan Moore and very solid players in weaker fields are going to get an edge and also he's a guy who has racked up you know five PGA Tour wins over the course of his career I, I think that win equity does matter it's always easier to bet on someone to win when they've already done it right and and Ryan Moore has already done it and Moore is one of like the three or four highest plus EV bets this week from data golf. So we are definitely in on him this week at, uh, at Sedgefield. Yeah. It, it's just easier to get behind when they've done it before. Like you, you've seen it, right? Like you've seen it happen before that they could actually finish it on Sunday. Although there's no crowd screaming them on and cheering them and going nuts but to be able to clinch it at the end, to survive the last grueling holes on the back nine on a Sunday. It matters. Ryan Moore's done it before. He's a good bet at 41-1, to especially in this field. I think you have to like him. A guy that's also done it before, and this is what you were saying at the top here, Davis, that it's kind of an old man's course. We get to Jim Fury. He's 70-1 to here. He certainly has all the world experience. Why is Jim Fury here in play this week? So Furyk is like actually good. Uh, he won his very first start on the Champions Tour two weeks ago. And, and I think that you would probably look at Jim Furyk and be like, well, you know, there's no way that he can hang with the guys on the PGA Tour. But what he does really well relative to the field is he is one, he's still at his age is one of the best players on tour strokes gained approaching the green so you know after he hits that uh, that short knocking 260 yard drive really there are few players on tour who are better at getting their shots in birdie position than Jim Furyk he is with 34 measured rounds he is 17th on tour in strokes gained approaching the green and even losing strokes off the tee which you know in, in this day and age in golf it's very hard to keep up if you're not gaining strokes off the tee, he is still 72nd on tour in strokes gain total. We think that this course is going to play towards kind of the, you know, you don't need to bomb and gouge off the tee as much, though obviously hitting it far always helps. I, I actually think Furyk at 70 to 1, um, you know, if I was making my bet sizes corresponding to how much I like them instead of just doling out the units beforehand, Furyk at 70 to 1 I think would be my biggest bet. I, I straight up think he can win here. It's great that you're betting on someone that you actually think can win. Like, that's a really good start here. And even yeah, if it's good, I, I think that's going to be very healthy for my long term betting career. If I stop betting guys I like and start betting guys I actually think can win. Absolutely. And I think this is a good start. In fact, unlike some JM where you're just like, this guy is terrible, you're like, Jim Fury is actually pretty good. And now I'm kind of believing it, man. You, you think that this guy, even though he's on the Champions Tour, he's not a young spring chicken anymore. What he's doing around the green is what other players are not. If he could just keep, um, keep the tee shots in play and, and do enough, he's going to make some noise this weekend. As Davis says, this guy actually has a chance to win. And you're getting him at 70 to 1, so place the bet. Now we'll get to two of your favorites here. We'll get to Jason Kokrak. He's 150 to 1 this week. Kokrak has been a long term staple for you, Davis. No surprise you're going back to him this week. Yeah, it's just one of those things where if I'm going to, you know, in my recent past, I have bet Kokrak at 75 to 1, I bet him at 80 to 1. And we all of a sudden we see him at 150 to 1 in a weak field event. I, I mean, that's just uh, that that's pretty much just a slam dunk. And actually, go back and look at how he's done at this event in the past. He had a T6 at this event last year in 2019. Kokrak tends to be one of those guys in weaker field events who, because he is just like, he's probably going to make more birdies than Jim Furyk. He's going to make more birdies than Sung Jam. It's just a matter of limiting the damage of the bad holes because he, he can definitely spray it from time to time. But 150 to 1 for him just it, it really does kind of just seem like uh like a layup though and he actually was gonna make the cut at uh, the pga championship he was he was on the road to making it and then just had this horrendous back nine where he went uh he went bogey 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 to start the uh, the back nine and uh just it really got away from him on uh, on friday but he you know so so what can you do at, at that point really Nothing screams Jason Kokrak than going bogey, bogey, bogey to start off the back nine. Exactly. When you need to make the cut. And you're right. He's going to make some birdies. He's going to put himself in a position here this week. It's can you limit the damage? He was not able to do that last weekend. Hopefully with this field, with the cup being a little bit different, uh, he will be able to get that job done. We bet him at 75 to 1. We'll double that. It's 150 to 1 this week for Jason Kokrak. So let's get him in there. You want to talk about Davis Maddox, guys? That's what we get with Hollywood Hoagie here. Tom Hoagie, 250 to 1. He's your boy. You're seeing him at this number. How do you not? So 
Hoagie is like the best ever course fit at this golf course because he has that old man game where he, you know, he kind of just bunts it off the tee, but he really is one of the strongest wedge players on tour. Uh, he actually did make the cut at the PGA Championship, played pretty well all four days. And, and his um, approach, his off the tee game has gotten a little bit better. For example, he's better off the tee than Jim Furyk is. He's actually had success at this golf course before in the past. Uh, when he came on my podcast, we talked about his appearance at, uh, at the Wyndham Championship in the past because it was the first time he ever played with Tiger Woods. He went out in the final group with Tiger Woods uh, two years ago and, you know, did not, I mean, didn't have the, uh, the best ever round of his career. I, I think partly because he was playing with Tiger and, uh, and he was super nervous, but he's had success at this golf course. He's a really good course fit with how strong his wedge play is. And uh, I mean, 250 to one, just, I, I also think you can bet him T10 and T20. If you don't want to just straight up bet him outright, you know, you think the win equity is pretty small because you're getting really good T20 odds. Um, oh, he's had some success at this course. He, he knows it well. He's a friend of Davis Maddock. You leave at 250 to 1 to win it all. And if you don't want to do that, you want to go to T10, you want to go to T20, that's okay too. Because 250 to 1, these odds are just way too big right now for Hollywood Hoagie. So take a shot. Put him in there. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Davis, we appreciate the time. Good luck. We'll talk to you next week. Beautiful. Thanks for having me. And uh, let's come back to a Tom Hoagie victory. That would be awesome. For Davis Maddox, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll do it all again tomorrow right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.